Well, hello there, it's Ina here and welcome to my art room. As today's project calls for a round substrate, I will use this dollar store bought wall decor piece. As you can see here, I started taking it apart. I will take the word family off. I will also uh, remove all the paper. It was a bit fiddly because it was really stuck, but with the help of some water and my scrub brush, it became nice and clean and now is a much better surface for me to work on. So I start by adding some black gesso just to the edges. Now this circle is made from artist press board and I happen to have this ring made from the same material. It has been in my stash for a while and today I think it will give me just what I need to elevate my piece a bit. So I start by adding very simple texture paste through a stencil for my first texture. Now this project is of course part of the four core art challenge for the month of May. And when I'm done with my process, I will show you the lineup of all the entries I received from all of you. And then towards the end of the video, I will of course also give you the new challenge for the month of June. So please stay tuned. Here I am using some gel medium so I can glue down this piece of fabric for my background color. Like always, I edited all my video footage to cut out all the unnecessary stuff, especially all the drawing times. And that's why I switched back and forth between the different pieces. But I think it's pretty easy to see uh, what I'm doing. So I added black gesso to the dry texture paste. And now after my fabric is dry, I use just a file uh, to cut off the edges. It gives me a much smoother edge than if I would try to do it with a scissor or even with an exacto knife. Next, I use some silver rubbing buff to bring out the texture on the ring. And then I will also add some to the edge of the circle. My project today will definitely have a resemblance to an assemblage, no surprise there, but I will put it together quite differently. I actually had planned to do something completely different for this challenge, but when I was looking for the right pieces to use, I found some very interesting shapes in my box of metal bits and pieces. And they were just perfect to create this little figure you will see in just a few moments. So here are some of the things I will be working with. A little silver coaster and it had this velvet paper on the bottom which I removed but I couldn't get rid of all the glue they used. But I cleared the middle section so I can glue down this uh, game marker and that will elevate my little plate when I add it to my background. And most pieces I glue, I will weigh down so they have a really strong hold. Next, I have this metal shape. I have no idea what it was meant for. Then I have this little yellow earring. So I clip off the stud and it will just make the perfect little beak. Now these two pieces gave me a really nice starting point and from here on everything else fell into place quite easily. This is another piece from the handyman drawer. It has a hole in the middle and is a little bent and gives my bird a little cheek. And next I have this really simple old pair of scissors and two metal bobbins and they fit perfectly inside those handles. And you might guess what part of the bird this eventually will be. This metal hand came from my broken jewelry box and it might just give this bird the headdress that will turn it into a chicken. <laughs> we will see. Here again, I have a piece from a broken necklace and it will give my round uh, belly here a bit of a better shape as well as a little neck. So I will continue to assemble my piece, but I will take a little break from chatting with you. My process is super easy to follow. I will name everything I'm using in the captions and I will be back talking to you in just a few minutes. Enjoy.
So my project is done and if you look closely through the hole, you can see that the bird has a painted eye. It was a bit of an afterthought and yes, you can see it very well, but it is there. I'm very pleased that all these odd bits and pieces came together so nicely to create this unique little fellow. And yes, contrary to many of my other assemblages, I decided not to paint over this, but leave it in its natural state. I think it just fits the project so much better. Now by elevating the belly I created the space I needed to tuck in the tail feathers and the legs. And the ring helped to give me some texture. I used my stencil. I also have fabric for texture. But then here on the edge, yes, I fudged a little bit. I like to think that working with the stylus could count for stamping because I just couldn't find any other room to edit. And the back, yeah, is just simple craft paper just to clean it up. And that's all there is to this little project. I know it's a little bit more simple than many of my other assemblages or projects, but I believe it looks complete and really didn't need anything else. So I hope you like it. I really liked all the entries you sent my way. All of you who participated in the challenge, and of course, all your photos are right here in a wonderful lineup. So please enjoy everyone's ideas and creations. And right after, I will be back. <laughs> Now throughout the lineup you notice that some artists made also process videos and of course the links to all of those are below in my description box so please take a look. I want to give a big thank you here to all of you artists who participated. Like always you came up with great ideas and wonderful projects and I'm always thrilled to know that you enjoy these monthly challenges and that you look forward to the new ones. Well the new one for June is here. I again set a theme and I picked time. Now first of all when I hear time I think about time pieces, uh, time telling devices like clocks and watches. They are also the more unusual types like sundials and water clocks and many more. Especially in the past many very interesting contraptions have been invented to tell time. Even today we have some very unique looking and working clocks and who knows what we will have in the future. So lots of different things that could give us inspiration for this challenge. Now aside from time telling devices, there's also a more organic way of telling time. There are the phases of the moon, there's the tide of the ocean, and you can most likely think of many more things related to time. Now as part of 
uh, part one for our four core challenge, the theme, I also want to show you some visual ideas just to get you started. Let's say you have a wall clock or a counter clock. You could decorate it. You can alter it. You can give it a makeover. You can paint it, use paper on it, dimensional embellishments, bits and bobs, whatever you like to give it a completely new look. And that would be a great project for this challenge. Or maybe you have an alarm clock that doesn't work anymore or any clock that doesn't work. Take it apart and make something new out of it. It doesn't have to represent a clock as a whole, but it needs to be related to time, of course. Or maybe you have some smaller time-telling devices like these uh, broken watches and you can incorporate those in some three-dimensional project. Or you like to work two-dimensional, you can absolutely do a painting. Just think about Dali and his melting clocks. You can depict a grandfather clock, a cuckoo clock, who knows what would fit into your creation. You can absolutely go the way of a collage. You can find timepieces in magazines. I have this uh, clock face here on a poster. Uh, but again, both in the painting, in the collage, and your 3D element. You don't just have to stick with a timepiece like a clock. It can just represent time in some shape or another. That is completely up to your imagination. So that is part one. And now for part two, we will all include some uh, printed paper, script printed paper. So it could be an old book, which I really like to work with. I have a dictionary here as well. And uh, you could, of course, use more modern pages from magazines or newspapers or books. You could also just print some script on a piece of paper and use that. The main idea is that it's scripted paper, which we will add to our creation. If you do a painting, it could be in the background. You can paint over it. Just make sure we can still see it. If you do a collage, it could be just part of your collage elements. And if you do a 3D project, maybe your project needs a background. It needs some something as part of some of your elements you add. You just have to think a little bit outside the box how to incorporate it. So this is part two. And now for part three, we will all add an accent color. Now you can tell that it will be the color red. Now accent color means a color that we use very sparingly. So the red should by no means dominate your project. It should just be here or there. It could be just in one spot or maybe two or three, but most likely not more. And what you use to add that red, it just depends what you're working on. I pulled out a few examples, alcohol ink, there's a gelato, there's paint, of course, there's a marker. You could also just add red paper. This is some craft paper. You could add fiber in red. This is one of those zigzag ribbons or fabric in red. Or if you like to go more dimensional, uh, have a look around. I have a big red button. I have a couple of game pieces. I have a die and I have some beads and I have a little shiny uh, cabochon. So anything red will do. It can either have red as its original color or you can paint it red. So that would be part three. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm a little sore today, so my voice is not the greatest. And last and not least, we will name or label our creation. I think especially in this case, it will be very interesting to know where your inspiration came from and what you were trying to portray. So please add it either within your project if it's suitable or on an extra piece of paper. And it could be all kinds of different things, but make sure that the word time is included. Now, 
we love to have quotes with time. They're all over the place. We say uh, time flies. We say time is of the essence or turn back time, the passing of time and those kind of things. This is another one. It says once upon a time. Now you do not have to use one of those more common quotes. You can absolutely make your own. But if some of those fit your project, use it. Here is a piece from a newspaper, the New York Times. Here's a little uh, poem. Those who give of their time are truly generous. And yes, if you cannot fit your title or your name within your project, just write it on a separate piece of paper and lay it next to your project when you take a photo so we can all see it. Either case, make sure your writing is big and clear enough so we can read it. So that's part four. So we have the theme, time. We all add a piece of printed script paper. We add the red accent color and we name or label our piece and the name will have the word time in it. So that's it for today. These are the four core elements. You will find them again at the end of this video and also below in my description box. If you have any questions, please just ask either in the comments below or send me an email. I'm always happy to hear from you. I thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you will play along in this June challenge. Like always, you have the remainder of the months to work on your project. Just make sure that your photos arrive in my email before the month is up. Thank you so much for coming. I hope to see you really soon again. I will be back latest next week. Stay well, stay creative and bye bye for now.